reason we might want to really consider looking at that as we make our rules is because if you don't have a kitchen in Denver, you can't sell food in Denver. So people from across the state are sort of stuck outside of the region that has half of the MMCs. Mm -hmm. And that's in part due to their rules. Um, so a lot of a lot of food companies move to Denver to try to make it work, and a lot of them miss, yeah. a lot of them miss the rush. I commute an hour and 20 minutes every day for that simple reason. I think it's worth, <clears throat> excuse me, going back to Denver, and I've been talking to several of the council people. Um, that rule and, and, and the reason for that really was because the state hadn't stepped up at the time. I think that the city would be willing to review that, being that the state is stepping up and regulating that, and, and that's a worthwhile argument, you know, well, as a group. Are you, where are you getting your information that the state is going to start to do this across the board for centers and myths around the rest of the state? Because the information I've gotten from the Department of Health consistently has been that only Denver will do that and it's their local municipality and that the state will not take that on or touch doing the licensing that the city requires you to have. Oh, no, no, what I meant was that originally, that, right, originally that regulation about the fact that dispensaries could only um, purchase from Denver MIPS, basically, I mean, there, were, there weren't MIPS, but Denver Kitchens was because there was no oversight or regulation on a state level. I think this comes back to what Dan was saying earlier, though, is that 1284 specifically doesn't treat these products as food. Denver does treat them as food. So that... That's not, I don't think there's any shift on that until we start talking about food on the state level with regulatory section. Yeah, and, and let me just say, um, there's a number of, um, and I'll just say, there's a number of venues out there who have things on the book that are contrary to 1284, and they're going to have to get in compliance with 1284, the state statute requires it. And I know that that's one of them. I know there is a venue in the state that requires you to have a retail food service license. The statute specifically says we can't license a place that has a retail food service license, and nor will we. And so, I mean, there's going to have to be some uh, some give and take. And to that end, I know that there are a number of venues out there that are looking to see exactly where we're going with these kind of issues, as Tom said. I know I've participated in two or three meetings with statewide health agencies um, and had very generic discussion about these kind of things, and that's what the purpose of it is. I mean, we're, we're all trying to get on the same page to the best that we can, um, knowing that the regulatory scheme itself, the first license will initiate until July of next year, uh, many of those venues are looking to see what our proposals are going to be before they go down that road um, and change their their local ordinances, resolutions, or whatever they have that uh, you know, controls their local laws. So, just, just a parenthetical note: Denver uh, does require food licenses, and they also allow for commissary kitchen. You know, and mm -hmm. one of those things that has to be good. Have to be reconciled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw another comment somewhere. Okay, um, I I think it makes sense to make this apply to both centers and uh, MIPS uh, facilities. Um, I will do some research and tell you if you put that on your list as well to see if we can um, find other statutory authority to uh, make similar or comparable standards apply to Grows as well. So I understand you saying that, that this will not apply to Grows, but I also understand you having said last week <coughs> that the Grows will be allowed to make water only water and ice hatch in their grow facility. How does that translate when they sell that hatch to someone to cook with? I think you're getting way ahead. <laughs> cool, but it's, a, but it's a good question to think about for later. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, just generically, whether or not we have the ability to, to put standards in place for grow, I'm confident I'll find other authority for it, but I just, off the top of my head, I can't tell you where it is. And from our perspective, the medical perspective, the um, there is a source <coughs> within the growth facility, a potential source of contamination that would be of concern um, to the end user of, of whatever product. And there are some, um, they're not standards per se, but some common uses of different disinfectants within a growth uh, operation that, that uh, we, if we have the statutory authority to do so, may want to try to be more specific about. Because um, even though we're looking at topically applied uh, or, or 
substances that may be applied to the plant, we also need to look at um, how pots are cleaned and, and soil is dealt with so that there isn't a, a contaminant that just simply persists within that particular operation. And uh, if there is a statutory uh, ability to do so, it's pretty confident I'll probably take that in there. And we have some, some references to that. Okay. And, and Brian, you, I believe, if I remember right, are in charge of the GROW group. Yes. Um, if you would take the docs comments into consideration as you move forward as well. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Other comments? Tom, did you yeah. Well, and again, I know uh, your membership spent a lot of time putting these things together. And I appreciate the rest.